What it is, man. Welcome back to another episode of I Hate the Homies. Episode number 103. Rock Teasies, who I be. It's your boy Griff, a.k.a. Raider Nation, a.k.a. Go Blue, a.k.a. Jason Terry. I'm out here and I hate the homies. And he's back in the building, man. Good to hear you back in the building, dog. I know you was out last week uh, a little bit under the weather, but now Super Dave is out. But, uh, Which is weird. He's, he's, literally, he's, he, he's literally under the weather. <laughs> Yeah, good. I need to do him like he do me when I'm gone and just take all the cheap shots. Oh, uh, him got smallpox. <laughs> <laughs> no, he on vacation. Dude, don't never go on vacation, so I'm happy for him. Absolutely, man. So we're gonna get it, we're gonna make this one quick and easy. Have a good time talking about uh some of the transactions that just happened in the NBA. Woo! including Bronny James. We have give you our official thoughts, but y'all already know, man, I've been telling you what I've been thinking about Bronny James. So it ain't no secret from, from rock teasy for sheezy. And if y'all are not aware of who Quincy Wilson is, you about to find out on this episode of I hate the homies and Griff, you got an exclusive interview coming up as well too, right? That's right. With Assemblyman Benji Wimberly and Al Quadine Muhammad, a former NFL player. I'm excited about that. All right, let's get it popping, man. I hate the homie starts right now. You done messed up, A.A. Ron? Yeah, huh? I've been geeking for this broadcast. Got me in my bag, cause all they do is talk a lot of trash. Wait until I see them face to face off of this podcast. What you gotta say now? Check the facts, don't have a wrong stat. Rock to he a genius as a sport, make Ricky smile, boy. Super Davey Holly come up short on like it's cowboys. Always controversial, grip call out plays, no rehearsal. Got me talking all in circles. Ah! I hate the homies. And Griff be laughing like it's funny. But they never bet no money. They my mans, but they throw me. Ah, I hate the homies. All right, let's get going, man. So, listen, there's a couple transactions out there that really got me excited. And let's start with former Golden State Warriors Splash Brother Number Two, Clay Thompson. Expected to sign a three-year deal with the Dallas Mavericks for fifty million dollars. Is it fifty million or one hundred and fifty million? You gotta get that no, right. It's fifty million. That's it's what I 50 thought. Million. That's what I thought. Yeah, okay. Yeah, yeah. You all the way right. There and it is. After being with with Golden State thirteen years, going to Dallas in a move that you, Super Dave, and I have been saying Dallas is one piece away. I believe that's the piece. Come on, dog. Let me tell you something. See, he ain't got no pressure because the pressure still is on Kyrie and Luka. Absolutely. Now, Kyrie can just run around, shoot, play defense, and just do his thing, man. I really think he's going to revive his career. Like, he may not be the step, I mean, the Clay Thompson of, you know, year of 2015. Yeah, but right, 2016. But those but who are he saying got, he got you 18 a game, though. Come on, man. Like, right. He got you 15 a game. Let me, guaranteed. Let me tell you something, man. This this dude right here is about to uh his his shooting percentage is about to go back through the to the roof. Yeah, because he ain't gonna have to make all the shots. He got you got Lucas, Lucas team, it's Kyrie's next, and then you get to come really off the bench as a dude who uh just wanna add to the team. And what an addition. I mean, I mean, everybody in the NBA knows Clay is a shooter. Uh he, it, you know, he had some some horrible injuries that he came back from and shot again. Like uh I think I I'm I'm all the way with you with this. Uh this could be a new clay, a, a different kind of splash. Yes, sir. <laughs> Let's splash it up, baby. Speaking of splashing, Jason Tatum, his pockets just Jeez. splashed, reaches the largest deal in NBA history. Jeez. Five year, $314 million deal to stay with the Boston Celtics. Now, Boston has every member of its starting lineup under contract through 2026. Oh, yeah, they ready to run it back, dog. And the ill part is. Is 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 like fifty million for Jason, fifty million for for Brown, and then thirty for Drew, thirty for uh, Porzingis, and another maybe twenty seven for somebody else. Like, yeah, they've paid for theirs. It's it's uh that's how you do it. That's how you do. It. You try your best to keep your your nucleus together as long as you can by any means necessary. That's old school basketball right there. And what better franchise to do it than the Boston Celtics, who has the most titles of yep. all 
NBA franchises. Donovan Mitchell, he's staying put in Cleveland. He just signed a three-year extension for $150 million to be a calf for another like few Donovan, years. Donovan, man. He really went over there, left Utah, came over there, and – they they thought he was going to do okay but he came in and 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 shocked the world. Cleveland was a problem. Cleveland was in second place, second and third place a couple times during the season. Yeah, him and Garland is is a nice one two punch. Like they doing some things over there and I still believe I still believe that when it's all said and done LeBron James is going to retire a one year contract with the Cleveland Cavaliers when he's ready to walk away from the game. After his son just came to the Lakers? He's going to play for another four or five years, bro. I'm talking about when he retires, when he's Duh, done playing. You're saying LeBron got five years in Man, let me on, tell you bro. something. Let me tell you something, bro. The only way LeBron would not play another four or five years is if he had some some uh, crazy injury that will prevent him from doing so. But other than that, this dude takes care of his body better than Tom Brady. You know what I'm saying? And he's not playing a contact sport. And the way the new rules are, there's no hard fouls hardly anymore in the NBA. So, dude, he sits back and can just do whatever he wants. He has no signs of really slowing down. You know what I'm saying? He ain't jumping to the moon no more, but he's still getting up and down that court. He still can drop 30 anytime he wants to when he chooses to. So, yeah, I can see him playing another four son, or five years. going to leave his son in L.A. by himself? Um, you never know, man. I think he's going to, I think. I don't think he, he did Cleveland already. He left, he came back, he got a ship. Why would he, I mean, he's fine. He's Come on, fine. man. It's where, it, it's where it started, bro. It's like, it's like Emmitt Smith. Like he came back to Dallas to retire Dallas Cowboy. You got to do it, dog. Yeah, that's because he was garbage in Arizona. I mean, he's a rushing leader and all. But he could have retired in Arizona and just, went and just still kind of went off into. Well, it's different in football, dog. Don't do that. It's the same don't... thing, dog. <laughs> LeBron James is a Cleveland guy. Akron, Ohio, He everything is Cleveland. So he's going to have. he did what he needed to do. Why? I mean, I mean, this is just us talking about it. But I don't think he'll. I don't think he will. I think he'll. I think he's getting his son, getting the Lakers franchise to pick his son 55th. In the second round, I think he has the, he has cemented his life in L.A. Like it's it, they about to have some fun, man. And no, uh, and 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 not like Bronny coming off the bench starting and all that. But when he in there with his dad, how cool is it going to be for his daddy to throw him an alley oop? Or you know, I was watching his other son is sweet too. Hey, let me tell you, you something. You know that, right? Let me tell you something. Like, let me tell you oh something. Oh my though. god! So 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 Bronny Bronny matured early. Like, yeah. Bronny was one of those kids that's been dominant since he was eight. He's always been the best player on the team. He's always yeah. had to play up a couple age, ages so he can stay competitive. Bryce was the opposite. Like, Bryce was always one of the ones kind of at the, at the bottom of the roster, not really the best player, kind of okay. But then he developed late. He's de he's developing now. Yo, dog, and I just saw him shooting around. First of all, he got his daddy's size. I mean, he, he may be taller he's, than his daddy. Is he? Yeah, I mean, he got – he was always a little fella under his brother, but he has sprouted, dog, mm -hmm. like – and he got – I was watching his handles the other day. I said, LeBron out here making machines. Hey, I ain't mad at him. Bryce may be, when it's all said and done, better than Bronny. Like, nice. For real, for real. So stay tuned for that one. But let's, do, let's... You think, do you think Bronny this season, so, of course, you know, practice, and, and, and um, I think maybe next week they start, right? Yeah. July 14th or something in uh, Vegas. The G League, uh, yeah. Yeah. Do you think, it's going to be good for him to sit and watch or do you think he's just going to jump in and do what he can and and and, and while he's in uh you know making the points that he can while he's in there instead of just sitting and you know what do you think his progression in the game is going to be i mean a dude he actually did hella good at the combine oh he did like, great considering he did great at the <laughs> yeah, combine so no i it think it wasn't like a fluke but why wouldn't he do great his daddy is lebron james he he can sit around he can practice the combine at the real combine place. Yeah. Like, <laughs> yeah, no, he's um, he's um, he's it's gonna they're gonna make the decision on how they play him and if he plays. Uh, and then what according position to the is, what position is he, he plays the one two? He plays the one and two, yeah, point guard and shooting okay. guard. So they're gonna base their decision off of how he performs in the G League. You know what I'm saying? Get get some more rips up under his belt. 
and then um and then go from there. He, of course, what he's if not. he nasty this summer though, dog? If what he's if he nasty just, this summer, he gonna come off the bench and he gonna get him. Me? He gonna get him a good twenty <laughs> minutes a game. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> Straight up. I don't think they gonna. For, I don't think they gonna force him. No. Nah. Uh, give him a, too many minutes, like 20, 20 minutes, twenty five tops. He'll get a At game yep. if he performs really well this this summer. But anyway, it's a great story. I love it. I love it, man. And this lets you know how awesome LeBron is. Like. This ain't even about Bronny, bro. No. This is the legacy that LeBron. And it's beautiful. I dog. love and it. And I was going to ask you, does the, I mean, Michael Jordan's kids didn't come to the NBA. They didn't even make it. Like, Jordan was not playing with his sons. Like, I just love how LeBron was a father and basketball was fun. You could tell Michael Jordan was a tyrant. Like, you know what I'm saying? I'm not going to sit here like, you could just see the difference. Like, does LeBron, does this change LeBron's everything? Because his son is in the league, dog. Like, yeah, I'm asking you. I've been saying it all week. I can't wait to talk to the homies to talk about this Bronny thing because it changes everything. Man, it's 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 a lot of people out there hating on on LeBron and and but they hate him anyway. If you hate yeah, LeBron, like, James, you're on, a hater, I, and we can't change your heart. And you're gonna be Super Dave when you grow up. I, <laughs> that part, but I love it, man. I look at it from a whole other perspective of you know when we first when, you, when when people make when people <laughs> mention Jordan, they automatically it's like Jordan, the greatest NBA player to ever play dot, dot, in, dot. in the yep. league. Okay, he changed the game as well. Everybody wanted to be like Mike. You know, everybody wanted the sneakers. Everybody still wanted his sneakers. Shoes, everything. Yep. So, so he brought the baggy shorts. You know, he brought coolness to the game, all that good stuff. Now, look, let's talk LeBron. He's doing the same thing in a different way. You know what I'm and saying? Uh, money, and and uh, money. <laughs> he's saying, listen. He took what he took what Jordan did as a businessman, and yeah. saying, I'm gonna show. You, I'm gonna take my ba- my brand on the court, and I'm gonna make billions off of my brand. And here's how I'm gonna do it. And LeBron has done that times ten. He's got a media company. He got he's, he's got, got his school dog. Oh. He's made sure people go to college. Come like on. he's. He's special, man. He's and he, special. He's like, picking his own. He's picking his own head coach. Like everybody knows, yeah. he chose JJ Redick. You understand me? Say what you yeah. want to say we about ain't it, but talk about that. Yeah. <laughs> Come on, dog. So I love it, man. It's part of his legacy. It is what it is, and I think Bronny's gonna be fine. And just take your time with him. Don't throw him to the wolves. You know what I'm saying? No, they're not gonna. He's not gonna let that happen to his son, regardless. Absolutely. You know what I'm saying? It, the same way you just said, he picked the coach. He gonna pick when it's time for his son to start. He gonna pick when and it's then, time. Then, when it's time like to son said, to uh, sub no in rush. too. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> he gonna be on the beat. Yo, yo, Bron. Yo, yo come and here. Then, come and then, what else can LeBron do after the NBA ownership? Of course. You know, you're always already talking about the team in the, uh, in Vegas. Of course. Uh, that they want to get. But but then also, the, oh, I wanted to tell you this. I don't, well, you would know. Regular people would know. Remember Trajan Langdon? Why does that name sound familiar? You don't remember him? Remember he was called the, the Alaskan Assassin. Uh, remember? Yes. Remember? Yes, yes. Well, dude is the president of the Detroit Pistons. Now he, if you go look at his career, he been a president of a bunch. He been a vice president, a GM of a bunch of NBA. Like he was supposed to be next. That didn't really fizzle, and then he went in the corporate part. Now he's the president of that. Detroit. That's why. And unless while we talk about basketball, BJ Bickerstaff, mm-hmm. is that right? Yep. New head coach. Uh, I like that for them. But it was because of Tra- Trajan Langdon or Trajan. He went to do, Langdon. didn't he? Yes, sir. There you go. Yes, sir. Okay. <laughs> That's crazy, man. I didn't even know that. So I was wow. Just saying, I mean, what else could LeBron do? I mean, he's definitely not going to commentate. He got things to do. He ain't going to be sitting watching games for 82 games. Like, all he could do is own the team. Man. Like, period. LeBron can do whatever <laughs> he want to do. As Tom Brady. Straight up. He's going to take his time. He's going to be in the booth, but he's going to be in the booth at his own terms. When you know what I'm saying? Go. Absolutely. So, there it is, man. Uh, real quick, I, I got to let the world know if they don't already know about 16-year-old. Yeah, I want to know, too. Please tell me about this Quincy person. Yes, indeed. So stay tuned. All right, this ain't going to take long, y'all. 16-year-old Quincy Wilson. Who is he? He's from the D.C. area. He's officially made the U.S. Olympic 
track team in the men's 4x400 four meter relay. He is headed A little boy. to Paris. Quincy is the youngest track and field athlete to make Team USA. He's the world what? record holder in under 18 age groups. Like the dude went to the Olympic trials, the USA Olympic trials, and was housing grown men in the 400 meters. Boy, it's cold. Yes, sir. <laughs> He's cold. Look, he really 16. He just turned 16 January 8th. Let me tell you something, man. It's hard to get the run of 400 meters under 45 seconds. He's doing it at the age of 16. The dude what? is a beast. Why am I just now? You right. Quincy Wilson is that sweet? Quincy Wilson, Yo. man. Stay tuned for this kid. I can't wait. Now he just gave me another super reason to even really be locked in at the Paris Olympics oh, this be summer. I'm way locked in for the Yeah, yeah. Dude. I'm I'm an Olympic. I like archery. Come on. And then we got breakdancing this year. <laughs> oh, if America oh. don't win breakdancing, I'm going to be mad. Hey, dog. Even break. though hey, hey. I know Asia. I hey, breakdancing is worldwide, <laughs> son. Let me tell you that. It's worldwide. <laughs> it started in New York, but it's worldwide. So it's yeah. going to be fun to watch, man. There it is, man. So that's uh, and you got we got before we get up out of here, man. We got a we got a special interview that Griff is doing. So go ahead and uh, go ahead and make your little introduction and let's get it popping. When we come back, it'll be my interview with Assemblyman Benji Wimberly from New Jersey and Al Quadeen Muhammad, former NFL player. We'll be right back. I hate the homies special interview, man. I am actually on the line right now with Assemblyman Benji Wimberly. You might be saying, Griff, why are you doing politics on the show? Uh-uh. Assemblyman Wimberly is really, and I'm going to start calling him as of right now, Coach Wimberly. Um, Coach Wimberly, how are you doing today? I'm good, Griff. Thanks for having us today. And Man. I prefer Coach. How about that? Good. <laughs> Coach, uh, so Patterson, New Jersey, I'm going to let you introduce our, our, our second guest. But, um, Coach, you were at a school called Patterson Catholic High School. A lot of prominent young men came out of that school. I want to know how you went from coaching to being in politics before we bring on the guests. Uh, well, it was simple. I had been a coach, you know, uh, professionally for many years, coached at Eastside High School, then I became the head coach at uh, Patterson Catholic for 14 years. Uh, and in 2009, our, current, our mayor at the time wanted to cut the recreation budget where I serve as the director of recreation. At the time, the budget was only 2% of the entire budget. So I decided that we're going to fight this. You know, I'm going to run for mayor. Yeah. The initial plan, right? <laughs> yeah. And, but I'm like, you want to you wanna cut us? I'm going to uh, fight it. But instead, a friend decided for a run for mayor. I ran for city council at large. Uh, my support system was a bunch of my former players, coaches, uh, kids who worked for me for recreation. And we were able to win the election with the highest vote total in the history of uh, the city of Patterson for an at-large race. Come on. That is so cool. So literally, so the people that, that say, you know what? I want change. I'm going to run for something. You was actually that person. Like you are, you are a whole movie right there. Yeah, that, that was basically it. I just was tired of being, you know, complaining and going to city council meetings and I, and I was involved, but not in, in the forefront. So this put me in the forefront to say, and instead of me talking about it, you know, I was going to be bad about it, as they say. You know, that's it. <laughs> Coach, yeah. tell me about our guest, Al Quadeen Muhammad, and what he means to you. Oh, man. Al Quadeen Muhammad uh, was one of my uh, last classes at Patterson Catholic before the school, unfortunately, closed. Um, Quan came to me. We, we talked about this the other day. I was in Los Angeles uh, three days before we were going to go to football camp when he was a freshman. Uh, Coach Adonis, who is big time in youth football now with the Brick City Lions uh, in Shabazz High School, said, Coach, you got to get this guy. And I go, we can really leave in three days. I can't do nothing. This kid walks up, skinny, tall kid, but his neck was thick as could be. I'm going, man, this dude looked like a dude. Never saw him play, <laughs> no nothing. And um, we get him together. He comes up to camp with us. And, and Quan, I tell you about my camps. My camps were like boot camp. And he survived boot camp, came out of camp. And he was a starter as a freshman for us at Patterson Catholic. Um, I think he went on to be all county as a freshman. 
And unfortunately, wow. that's when the school closed. Um, but our relationship didn't end there. He transferred to Don Bosco Prep, which is a national power, uh, along with Elijah Shoemate, who uh, went to Don Bosco and ended up going to Notre Dame. And my oldest son uh, went there with them. And um, I, I stayed in touch with him. I, I, I still was a mentor. I still helped him out to make sure that, you know, he was good as far as, you know, going to school at Don Bosco. And um, he went on to University of Miami. Yes. Um, after Miami, uh, he, you know, has been in the NFL now, I believe, for seven years. You know, his, his uh, story started with the Saints and the Colts and the Bears. But, I mean, the dude's story is bigger than that. He has really been a role model at his hometown in North New Jersey, where he's from, where he's given football camps for thousands of kids. He's nice. been involved with community service projects. And I think, you know, really for me, one of the amazing things I'm really proud of, on July 12th, he's going to get to this key to the city from Mayor Roz Baraka on July the 12th. So that, that's Quan in a nutshell. How about that? <laughs> Quan, when you hear your your former coach and assemblyman talk to you, talk about you like that, how does that make you feel, my guy? I'm just I'm sitting here and I'm like, wow. I'm just like, wow. You know, um, when I met Coach, coach Wimberly, um, there was some guys from my neighborhood that that already went to Patterson Catholic, um, Greg Moore, and probably a couple other guys that I'm leaving out, and I knew all about Patterson Catholic. And uh, when I got there, we was going to camp, and I was just like, man, I was just like, I, you know, I was excited. I was excited. I was, you know, competitive, and, you know, I didn't know I was going to start as a freshman, but I was willing <laughs> to you know, compete, and I also didn't know camp was going to be that hard. <laughs> right. <laughs> So when you, um, Quan, when you say it was hard and I was in the military and I went to basic training and stuff, when you said it was hard, uh, talk to me about camp in that, in that summer. So to be honest, I don't remember in in coach Wimley. I know he knows. I I don't remember exactly where camp was, but I know we was in like, um, you know, cabins and stuff like that and oh he, he high, took it back high, <laughs> okay <laughs> okay yeah yeah it was really really old school and um uh if i'm not mistaken i think they did it by like you know the, the younger the, the younger classmen with the younger classmen or maybe they mix it up i can't really i think it was the the, the younger classmen the, the, the freshman with the freshman and sophomore with the sophomore and so on and so yeah. forth but we had to be up extremely early <laughs> well, I, 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 do, I do remember that we was, it was up extremely early and it was no joke and i got thrown in the fire early you know i, I went out there and and i was thrown in the fire and then i was challenged i was challenged and coach Wimberly challenged me every day and yeah all the other coaches and 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 they and their coaching staff was tough all around everybody was everybody held everybody to a high standard and i think that's probably you know like my freshman year playing at patterson catholic just taught me a lot of competing and just i was i was held to a high standard and it wasn't you know they was telling me that i wasn't a you're not a freshman you know you 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 like they they would tell me that like you're not a like you, they didn't treat me like a freshman like i they, love it Threw me and yeah, and they put me up against the the, the best of the best guys, uh, T.J. Clemens and and all those guys. So he didn't he didn't baby me. I can tell you that, and, and it taught me a lot. <laughs> it um, taught me a lot. I had to grow up quick. I love it, Coach. It, all I heard was in my mind was remember the Titans. Was that, uh, <laughs> uh, <laughs> that, that what? And, and we get that comparison sometimes. Okay. So, so this to give you this to give you a picture. We went upstate New York, around a two hours from here. It was a place called Camp Pontiac, mm-hmm. and um, uh, I'm sorry, Camp Timberlake. Pontiac was our first camp, and uh, we would have four sessions of practice a day, which is totally illegal Ooh. now. Like you, <laughs> I would be, I would be in jail. I would be, I'd be on the front page of the newspaper. <laughs> yeah. But these dudes, like coming from the inner city, kids yes. from North, East Orange, Absolutely. Patterson, Saint. 
Absolutely. A couple of New York kids on the squad, and but all urban kids. So you're out in the woods with no nothing, no Wi-Fi, none of that stuff. Yeah. You had to use a calling card to use for the phone. So I basically had them hostage for, you know, five, six, seven days. And we would get up in the morning at 5 o'clock. Our first pr- practice would be 6 o'clock in the morning. Um, which was conditioning in special teams, Quan, if you remember that. So yeah, it was conditioning in yeah. special yeah. teams. We would eat breakfast. Then we would take a break. Then we'd come back and practice again. Mm-hmm. Then we would eat lunch. We'd take another break. we come back and practice again. Yeah. we will eat dinner, and then we would finish the night off with my midnight run and, and practice to walk through yeah. our spring sometime. So nowadays, you know, the kids would have quit. They would have been done. Right. I was, me and Quan was laughing. My first year at Patterson Catholic, 10, quit, 10 kids quit when we got back to Patterson. Like, they got off the bus. They didn't even clean out their locker. They was like, yo, man, this, you crazy as hell. We out of here. <laughs> and, and the rest was history. From that point, we went on to win seven state championships. Let's league go! Championships. A, boat, a boatload of kids went to, yeah. A boatload of kids went to college. Um, you know, three uh, made it to the NFL with Aqua Dean, uh, TJ Clemens, who he mentioned before, yes. and Victor Cruz. So um, it was it was just a great experience. But I think the main thing during that camp was we bonded as brothers and as a family. Amen. And that's a bond that carries on. You know, 20 years later, people know what well mean, like it's a call we had, and brothers keep us. Yes. They'll, ne- they'll never forget that. I, yeah. I that that is so cool, man. I'm I'm also from the inner city of, of Los Angeles, and my mother's from Newark. Um, so I'm the only one who don't know how to pronounce it. But y'all say Nork. Uh, I'm saying it <laughs> properly, Newark. <laughs> but um, but at, Quan, tell me tell me this, man. Um, being a young man from that area and being able to rise. Um, to go to the University of Miami and then to play in the NFL. What do you tell tell kids right now? Because I heard you do big things in the community for the young men from the same community you're from. Well, I have done a lot in the in the North public school system, talked to the kids and, and um, done camps for free um, each year. And, uh, you know, always – started the camp with a speech and ended the camp with a speech. And I think one of my biggest things, I always think back to my childhood growing up in North, um, was that, you know, that you can make it, you can make it, you can make it out. You can make it professional. You could be a pro. You could do anything you wanted. And it don't have to be just football. That's right. It don't have to be basketball. It could be anything. I just always wanted to show them, you know, I come from, right here and uh, i went to some of these same corner stores and played in some of these same parks straight up some of these same leagues and all and i've done the same things i walked the same walks and i always just wanted to know that it's possible and this is how i did it and 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 i i worked my behind off and then i also you know um you know always would mention you know my coaches and stuff like that because my coaches was essentially they was my parents away from home that's real you know so so you know uh i still keep in contact with all my coaches and i'm and i'm very grateful for them i'm i'm said right now i'm grateful for coach Wimbley, um for just being always a leader and a, and a role model you know um yeah. to me and and i think it's my job to to, to pass that down to you know the, the younger generation and just giving them the right you know, words and the right tools and, you know, just giving them anything I could pour into them so they could be successful. And, um, you know, I'm, I'm just, I'm just happy. I'm, I'm, I'm able to, you know, talk about it and and able to still keep doing what I'm doing. I have one question for you both. Um, coach assemblyman, um, it sounds like you're a, you're a fisher of men and that you've been blessed with an ability to reach the young people because you know what their future is already going to be. Why, why has it been important in your life assemblyman to reach the youth? I mean, basically coming from Patterson, you know, I came from public housing, you know, living in projects, low income family, a neighborhood devastated by drugs and alcohol and my personal family, you know, uncles on drugs, selling drugs, um, you know, my neighborhood, you know, most of the guys, unfortunately, are either, you know, um, 
unemployed, not gainfully employed, on drugs, alcoholics, deceased, or in jail. Yep. And that was a cycle that was for many years. And contrary to what people think, this is the 70s and to the 80s, where heroin was the number one drug oh, back yeah, then. On the East Coast, the too. Yep. So you had a lot of guys. Yeah. So I grew up and saw that, and I just knew that I wanted better for myself Come and on. for the people around me. So when I went away to college, I went to Virginia State University. I always said I was going to come back and give back. And, uh, you know, I just want to inject, you know, hope into the young people, the young men, young women to say that, you know, there's a possibility, like Quan said, like you do not have to be, you know, a victim of your circumstance. That's you right. Break, you know, that vicious cycle of, you know, um, drugs or alcohol or unemployment or not having housing. So these are the things that inspire me to come back. And people always ask me, you know, to this day, I still live in Papson. Like, I have plenty of times that I could have moved and moved away. I got four boys. And raising four boys of your own that are your biological outside of your, your kids that you adopt is not an easy thing. But That's I real. Come on. If I, ran, if, I, if I ran from it, then I'm not showing these other folks like a possibility. My, my goal is that, like, I'm going to L.A. last week, and I get to meet Quan at his spot. And Quan live in a place that, that I won't tell you how much it costs, but <laughs> it costs a lot. We in there, and here comes Stephen A. Smith coming down the elevator. You know, yeah. We, his doorman or whatever pulls around in his car. That's my win. That's my victory. Yeah. Because he's gonna inspire somebody else who's got better than him. You know, Quan probably there's some kid in Newark. There's some kid that who's been at his camp who's going to be the owner of one of these teams one day. Come and on. I look at that as a legacy that is, is you know, that you pass on. So the bottom line is I just want to install hope into our young folks. Man, uh, that's beautiful. And, Quan, I, my last question for you, I want to know what what would you tell a young man about the importance of mentorship. Now, I could have said how to get in the NFL and to go to college, but mentorship, like having somebody help you when you're not used to having help. Man, the, the importance of mentorship, it means a lot, you know, because um, it's different than, you know, hearing oh, that guy playing in the NFL, he's from this city or this state or, and you don't know them. But I feel like, like through my journey of high school, college in the NFL, I was always coming back to my city. You yeah. could actually see me, you could shake my hand, you could talk to me, you know? So, you know, so the children would know this is real. This is for real. You know, so I think, you know, when I seen guys uh, before me, um, that's from, you know, North New Jersey, Ty here, Whitehead. Um, let me use him for example. Uh, we didn't go to the same school, but he's from the same city. And he, I, I watched him um, get drafted, and I was at his draft party and stuff like that. Little things like that is motivation. Yeah. You know, it, it's just motivation mentor somebody and you show them this is what I did, this is how I did it. For people that come from North New Jersey, Patterson, New Jersey, that's all the motivation we need. We don't need a lot. You know, huh. so mentorship, mentorship could take a person so it, it could put them in a mind state and, and give them an edge and give them a different level of work ethic to be successful. You know, and for me, like I said, all the motivation I needed was Everybody who came before me, whether it was someone from Patterson, uh, whether it was Victor Cruz or whoever, you know, we all from New Jersey. That's all the motivation I needed, you know, and all it took yeah. was extra work. All it took was work, you know, and um, Coach Wimberly, he instilled that, you know, if you want to be great, if you want to win, and not only win at football, but win at life, it's going to take hard work. And that's what we did. And that's pretty much what I give back to any younger kid that I will ever talk to or come across that just keep working, keep your head up and always, you know, speak positive things and stay with that positive mindset. And because, you know, the power of the mind is a special thing that could take you anywhere you want to go in this world. You know, um, what a blessing coach. You gotta, you gotta be proud of hearing him, uh, speak on uh, mentoring. Um, you guys are, y'all just blessed my day. 
Assemblyman Benji Wimberly out of New Jersey, Patterson. Uh, we just going to call him Coach and now Quadeen Muhammad. Thank you all for coming on this episode of I Hate the Homies. Blessings to both of you. Love what you're doing. Coach, if you ever need me to help you with anything in Patterson, let me know, my friend. Appreciate you. Thanks for having me, and we would definitely reach out. Okay, you guys stay blessed. Yo, that was a dope interview, man. Dope interview Thank right you. there. That's crazy, man. I, I didn't even know he did all that. I just I just love how uh, uh Assemblyman Wimberly was like, you know what? I'm not going I'm, I'm I'm not going to sit and complain about politics. I'm going to go jump in it. Yeah. And and he is a profound member of New Jersey's council. Uh so that's super duper dope. There it is, man. All right, man, we'll holler at y'all next week. Continue to download, subscribe, tell a friend to tell a friend. I hate the homies. Rock Teasy's who I be. It's your boy Griff, a.k.a. Raider Nation, a.k.a. Mr. Go Blue, a.k.a. Jason the Jet Terry. And I hate the homies. Let me do, let me do, uh, uh, let me do that. And it's, and it's your boy Super Day. <laughs> I hate everybody. I don't like it. I hate rabbits. <laughs> How do you hate a rabbit? <laughs> <laughs> Deuces. We'll holler at y'all, man. <laughs> Two fingers. <laughs> ah, I hate the homies. <laughs> <laughs>